as we extend the blockchain to include a cryptocurrency, we'll start writing the code for a few new engineering concepts. The first of which is digital wallets, which is closely tied to keys and transactions. We actually shortly discuss wallets in the introduction, but it would help to refresh the concepts of wallets and its related ideas in a cryptocurrency since we'll be building them shortly. Although, do feel free to skip ahead if you feel like you have a good handle on the idea and want to jump right into the code. To start, let's ask the question, what is a digital wallet? In terms of a cryptocurrency, the wallet is a core object with three main components. First off, in a wallet, we have a balance field. This represents the total currency allotted to an individual on the cryptocurrency's blockchain. Think of it as their net worth in the cryptocurrency. Then we have the wallet's keys. First, the wallet has one key which is private. Only the wallet owner should have access to it. Second, the wallet stores a public key that everyone on the cryptocurrency network can see. These keys are vital as they serve two primary purposes. First off, the private key allows the individual to generate unique digital signatures. For every exchange of currency that they want to create, they must sign the exchange with their signature. Second, the public key of a wallet allows other individuals in the blockchain network to verify digital signatures generated by that wallet's private key. In a couple of slides, we'll look at this verification process in more detail. This now leads us to the final component of a wallet, which is its public address. The address is identical to that wallet's public key. With a wallet's address, other individuals in the cryptocurrency network can send currency to that wallet. The concept of exchanging currency is represented through objects called transactions. Transactions are the objects that capture the information behind the exchange of currency between two individuals in the cryptocurrency. Transactions consist of two primary components. First, the input of a transaction provides details about the original sender. It includes a timestamp and the starting balance of the sender, which in this case is 500 currency. The input also includes the sender's digital signature for the transaction and also his or her public key. Second, the transaction consists of output objects. These output objects have an amount field and an address field. The amount represents how much currency the sender wants to send to a particular address within a transaction. Interestingly, the sender also creates an output for each transaction that sends currency to him or herself. Why? Well, this specifies how much currency the sender will have after the transaction. It's calculated by taking the sender's current balance and subtracting the amount of currency he or she is sending away with the other outputs in the transaction object. Blocks in the chain will now consist of one or more of these transaction objects. Therefore, every individual through their wallet can calculate their balance by looking at the history of transactions in the blockchain that belong to them. So the balance is the final amount of their most recent transaction plus all the currency sent to them through subsequent transactions, which are identified by the matching address to the public key. All right, let's return to the subject of digital signatures. In the introduction section of this course, we explored how these digital signatures are generated, but it's worth going over this concept again, since we'll be implementing the feature soon. Again, feel free to skip ahead if you have a good handle on the idea and want to get right to the code. As we established, each individual who wants to create a transaction in the blockchain must stamp the transactional data with their own unique digital signature. These signatures are based on the individual's two keys, the private key that only the individual has access to and the public key that everyone on the network can see. The keys themselves are unique strings of numbers and characters. With these keys, the user has the ability to sign data by creating a signature that is an encrypted hash value. The hash value signature is generated by a combination of the transaction data and the private key of the individual. Since the value of the hash is based on the original data, any change to the original data, such as changing just one value or one character, will generate an entirely new hash value and therefore a new signature. 
Now that the data has a signature, anyone can use the public key of the individual who signed that data to then verify that signature. The private key and the public key are linked. So the public key is then used to decrypt that signature and read the original data behind it. This brings us to verifying the transaction. In the event that the decrypted data does not match the original data presented by the transaction, well, then we know that one of two events have happened, which both invalidate the transaction. One, the original data was tampered with after the data was signed by the sender, because now the data in the transaction does not match the data that we decrypted from the signature and the signer's public key. Or two, the signature was generated with a private key that does not correspond with the public key that is being presented by the person who wants to perform the transaction. Overall, the system of the private key and the public key adds a highly secure system of authentication to the cryptocurrency. In summary, in order to extend a blockchain and a cryptocurrency, we need to focus on three main components. One, building wallet objects for individual users. Two, generating private keys that can create digital signatures for data and equivalent public keys for these wallets to support signature verification. And finally, three, creating transaction objects that capture the exchange of currency between individuals.